And I would say definitely there are a few things that come in within if they can't infer. Have they made connections? Is it up to me to make a connection for them? You know, like, should I have used more appropriate words? Back to that vocabulary. A sample of what I, sorry, but a sample of what I, I mean, I suppose, or an example. My daughter attended a high school. She studied, is it Sumer? Ancient Sumer, right? I live in Sunbury. Sumer is on a river. Why is Sumer on the river, she's asked. Nobody ever said to her, why is Sunbury on the river? Why is a village built around a river? She could only study Sumer and do a postcard for it. Now, I remember doing that back in the ancient times of high school. You know, like, we need to be bringing our ideas up into modern day. Great, do Sumer, ancient Sumer, but bring it into and make a connection. Use the vocabulary that we want children to have so that they can infer. If we don't provide that language for the, in some of them, some kids just get it naturally and you just wonder why. But others you have to actually talk to and drag it out like blood out of a stone. And that's what we have to be aware of. We're not teaching that bright little bunny because that bunny's going to learn all by himself or herself in spite of us. We're actually looking at and doing a lot of teaching strategies around the bottom two thirds. Aren't we? We're designing our things around that with an expectation of the top third. So that we're stretching them as well as teaching those strategies to get them through to those bottom two thirds to make sure that they're getting up with that top third. Or they're getting it to the level that they need at this time. So what comes before inferencing? What do we do? What are the skills, the subsets that we need to have in place so that we can infer Again, who would like to summarise something, what they've seen there? Which is exactly what I ask every student to do. Think of a summary in your head. What have you learnt today? Summarise it in your head. So that we are through just everyday activities, we're building comprehension strategies. We're building those strategies to use in any situation. Not just to write a summary at the end of, you know, a report or to summarise what I did at home or anything like that. <coughs> if you think of all these <coughs> comprehension strategies, bring them in. Bring them into no matter what you're doing. So, who'd like to have a go at it? I want you to write down just one sentence about what you see there. Off you go. At the moment, we are just getting a picture of where do these children need help? Because this is my next teaching step in my classroom. I know they're having difficulties with that. What am I going to do to support them to learn how to do that? So what are their strengths? That was the discussion when some, a couple came up and said, is it, you know, is it just making inferences or is it, was it, you that said something about inferring with a picture. So there's now you could start to break that down again. Is it just making inferences with using words? Inferences using pictures? You have the data in front of you. You have the tests online. You can go back to those tests now with a lot more knowledge of why you're going back to the text. You now have a focus to take yourself from the data that you've collected now, so why are they having trouble making an inference from that picture? So in the writing, 
that montage that they gave the three, five, seven and nines, a lot of people didn't use. The kids didn't use them properly. Why? Have we ever presented that to a child? Is it something familiar to them? That part, those parts of the text, of the test, should not be a blocker for finding out what children actually know. That's what we did yesterday, teaching the test as a genre. So let's look at all the parts. All right, so let's look at all the parts of the test. You can go back to it now, you can print everything off online from the last year's test. <coughs> 